implants, uh, I believe. It may not require implants. Anyway, they can manipulate your emotional state, so they can put you in any kind of heightened state of, of stress, of, of anxiety, of anger, of fear. There's been times where I've felt as though, almost as though they've recorded somebody else's emotional state and and layered it over mine um, with a feedback loop as well. Like my emotional state is being received by a computer, analyzed, processed, acted on, and then that signal is being sent back to me where I'm picking it up, acting on it, processing it, and it's increasing whatever emotion that I have because then I'm sending that emotional increased amount back and it's sort of looping around and around from me to the computer, back me to the computer, and getting bigger and bigger. Um, and the only way I've found to break that sort of spell is to, you know, sort of violently change your emotional... And, and, you know, you have to break it, you have to think of something else, go on to something else. Um, and I believe the way this technology works to motivate people is they use emotions as the, the underlying underlying driver. You, you can't see my hands, because I, I, I talk with my hands a lot, but they use emotions as the underlying driver, sort of, to, to push you in a direction. And then they use the inner dialogue, the, the talking inner dialogue, to direct the thought stream. So it's sort of like a soap opera in your head, you know? They, they're talking, uh, and you think it's you, whatever you you say to yourself and then the emotions underneath it push um, the other thing that I think is possible is recording your emotional states and playing them back to you so putting you in an emotional state you were in before that they recorded or or physical experience like sometimes there's these things where we have, we actually literally had bugs crawling all over our bodies on, on every part of our bodies in our in our ears in our nose in our eyes in our mouth in our, in our genitals in our anus they were everywhere and uh you know going into our skin and crawling around and all kinds of things uh, i'll talk about the bugs in another video but there's times where I'll be lying in bed and suddenly it's almost like a switch is switched and I feel like I've got bugs crawling all over me and I'm like, hey, do I have bugs crawling all over me or not? And then after a while it goes away. Um, it used to be much worse. Anyway, I think that these things are all possible now and these are the technologies that they're using against us. Um, why do I think that they can talk into your head? What proof do I have? Well, um, I have a great deal of, of examples. Um, the first one came when I had a thought that said, perhaps your thoughts are not your own. And I reasoned, you know, could they be putting thoughts into my head? And, and that was a big step, a big paradigm shift. And I had to sort of hold off on that realization for a while. But during that whole time, and I'm talking about the course of a year and a half, two years uh, of not really knowing, I was having all these strange thoughts like, you know, jump out the window, put your head through the glass, kill yourself, you should kill yourself, Timothy, why don't you kill yourself? It would be so much easier if you killed yourself. You can't handle it anymore. You, you, you're going to suffer so much, you should kill yourself. I mean, I got a lot of that programming, the suicide programming. Um, also, they're able to do it in your dreams. They're able to insert information into your dreams, insert dreams into your head. Uh, I, I know this all sounds like science fiction, but I have experienced it, my girlfriend experienced it, and I'm sure that some of you who are targeted individuals have been thinking the same thing. I'm here to tell you this is fact. Um, the reason I know about the, the voices in the head thing is because you know, they kept telling me do all these things and, and anyway, a couple years later I was laying in bed watching uh, He-Man, the show from the 80s that I like because it's so silly and gay and I love it. It's, it's wonderful. It makes me laugh. I'm like, I wish evil was that dumb. And there's so many sexual innuendos and the, the sub 
the sub the sub uh, excuse me the subliminal programming of He-Man is mostly sexual, homosexual, heterosexual, uh, and and there's some there's some death and stuff in there, but but I don't find it nearly as imposing as the modern day subliminal stuff. Uh, anyway, I'm watching this He-Man show like I've done countless times. I would watch them over and over. And I hear this voice in my head as loud as day, just like I'd said it. But it wasn't my voice. It was someone else. And they said, fucking He-Man. I fucking hate that show. It is so fucking gay. And then I was like, aha. Aha. Oh, after that. The computer went and I couldn't get He-Man anymore. And then for the next three months, I couldn't watch He-Man on Hulu because they kept claiming that my IP address was somewhere else and that it wasn't. And, and I have a cable modem, which is supposed to change your IP address every time you plug it in and, and reset it. And mine would stay static IP address for months. So I didn't have He-Man for like three months after that. And no matter what I tried, proxies, know other websites i did find some he-man on youtube thank you guys but um i was like basically denied access to he-man and, and she-ra uh, after that comment so you know that should make it clear to anybody that something is going on you know i mean i don't think that i'm that i've had a split personality and part of my personality hates he-man you know i think that besides the remote neural monitoring and the programming and the crap that they're doing to me, I'm a fairly well integrated person, uh, I don't know, I spend a lot of time thinking about everything, about every decision, about every thought, why do I have this thought, why do I have this desire, why do I make this decision, why do I feel this way, um, and I found that in analyzing these motivations, I've come to see the programming more. Um, subliminal programming to me is all pervasive. I see it in all television, in print, um, neurolinguistic programming, um, cognitive dissonance, all tools being used to manipulate the minds of people. And I've found now that I've become very aware of the the symbolic messages in the advertisements, which are usually completely different than the, the message they're telling you. Um, and the language message, which also backs up the symbolic message and is also completely different than what they're actually saying. Um, I, I've become so in touch with this that I find it difficult to watch any broadcast television. Um, anyway, um, so... Mind control is real. These people, uh, they had hats with robots on them. They were painting robots on the street. They even had a big metal cutout of a robot, a stylized robot, as they were showing us to try to scare us into thinking that we were becoming robots. We were being made into robots. But in fact, that's what they were trying to do. They were traumatizing us um, and using mind control to direct our thoughts and... and um, and make us act and, and do things. They're using the gang stalking to put the pressure on. Um, we went through several paradigm shifts, and that, that's the thing about this. I believe that they're actually creating a scientific methodology to force someone through several paradigm shifts to completely change your thought process, your neural pathways, your ideology, your belief structure, uh, your spirituality, and all of that. Uh, almost like if you start doing some research into the mystery schools and the occult and religion and meditation and, and all the different, uh, you know, Egyptians and schools thought what happens after we die, near-death experiences, astral 